The holidays, as you know, can be the most wonderful time of the year, but also the most stressful all at the same time. So it's very easy to overindulge and fall off our wellness wagon or sleigh, if you will. Travel and back-to-back -back parties can disrupt routines, create unpredictable issues as well. Hi everybody, I'm Kenneth Gibson, your host for today's discussion coming to you from the Baptist Health Newsroom. And to speak with us today about how planning ahead and adopting a flexible mindset can help us navigate the holidays while keeping our nutrition right. We're joined by the registered dietitian at Baptist Health, Lucette Talamas. Uh, great to have you here with us. Thanks, good to be here. Good, good to have you. You've been doing this for some 11 years, so you might know a little thing or two about what we're heading for towards. Um, before we dive though into today's subject, a reminder for our viewers, if you have some questions or comments in the comment section throughout this discussion, leave them there. We're here for you and happy to answer your questions that you may have. So we know that the holidays, um, said that the holidays comes with the food overload as well as drink overload. How do you stay on a healthy track? at least from a nutritional perspective? Well, the main thing during the holidays is to have a plan. So okay. that's why I'm really glad that we're here to talk about, it's a perfect time right now. To a lot of people have a lot of plan to overindulge. Right. <laughs> well, I like to break up the word overindulge into, okay. we can indulge, but maybe not overindulge. Okay. Okay. All right, so what's a plan? What do you do? What's the plan? Well, the day of, when you have a celebration, I always like to recommend to survey the area and to have that game plan. So anticipate the appetizers, the main dishes, the entrees and desserts and think ahead. So let's survey the, the area. Okay. Literally. Is that one of the three S's that I've heard about? We're about to get into okay, the three go, S's. Okay. I, right? Go ahead. Well, so it could be four S's if we're All surveying. Right. Uh -huh. Once you survey, then we get into the three S's. Okay. So that's the foods you're going to savor, sample and skip. So the foods you're going to savor are the ones that even from now you're already looking forward to that will be there on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You're going to savor those. You want the full helping, right? Okay. The foods you're going to sample are ones that you like, but you're like, I'm good with just a bite or two. Okay. And the foods you're going to skip, it's not that they're bad foods. It's, not, it's just that that day and that meal, you're going to skip them. So this is a mindful approach to a huge holiday table, deciding I, on foods you're going to savor, sample, and, and skip. skip. How do you decide though, like, you know, if there are all these desserts that are lined up, I will want to savor every single one of them and not <laughs> skip any of them. Well, How do you, I guess You might different. literally just take a, a, a bite, a little piece in, of okay. each. Um, there, there might be one, you know, for me, it's like, if there's a food I know I can get year round, I'm not as excited, you know, on Thanksgiving day. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm going to skip that. That's, Good point. But if it's someone's special pie that they make mm -hmm. once a year, you want, to try that, right? You want yeah. to eat a full serving of that. So. That's why it's such a tragedy when places start offering pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> in January <laughs> for the season. It seems it's been it, like it's all a year month round. earlier, <laughs> yes. But it kind of takes away the glimmer of it too, yeah. right? So it doesn't make it as special. But. Yeah, no, totally. So I like, and a lot of people do as well, canned food. So uh, uh, pumpkin in, in canned. Yes. Um, I'm one of those that, that's my cranberry sauce, is the, the, cran, uh, the, can, the cranberry. Is it any more or less nutri nutritious when it's a canned uh, item like that? So canned foods do not lose all of their nutrition. Canning is a form of preserving the food, mm -hmm. and it's definitely okay to include canned foods as part of a balanced diet. It's another great way to get in more vegetables. So um, in the case of like the canned pumpkin, it's a great way to get in more pumpkin, which is full of vitamin A and fiber. And you know, in the case of every other day, if you're just including more vegetables and canned vegetables are one of them, that's great. I always like to recommend canned, frozen, fresh, right? Like whichever variety of yeah. the three you can include. The important thing is to just eat more vegetables too. Now when choosing the canned vegetables though, it is important to look for low sodium or no salt added. Okay on okay. the Nutrition Facts label, yeah. So I used to um, deal with this uh, nutritionist, uh, Shanti, yeah, who's a health and fitness okay. um, uh, guy, and he said if it's prepackaged, he won't eat it. That's his, that, that's his thing because of the preservatives. Right. But it really doesn't have that much of an impact when it comes to the nutrition Nutrition balance. health. So when it comes to processed foods, there's different categories of processed okay. foods. So I'll, in order for us here to get the variety of foods that we have in our supermarkets, there's some form of processing. Like even fresh spinach mm -hmm. is to some extent processed and packaged, right? Yep. It's minimally pro processed. What we definitely want to cut back and 
cut back as much as possible is what we call ultra processed foods. It's the foods that last a really long time, years in the cabinets. Okay. Um, think of like the sweets and treats and desserts, like you know. So those are considered more ultra processed foods that we can cut back on. The ones that don't have an expiration date on it. <laughs> yes, the the little sweet cake that lasts like years <laughs> and years. <laughs> <laughs> might be an indication that there's something that you might not want to eat when it comes to those. So as you know, many people are, are dealing with chronic diseases, of course, like diabetes as well. Right. And food and drink um, is where they need to be careful. Um, are there special like nutritional considerations that can like help those people who have health issues like that? Right. Managing a chronic decision. Uh. Disease. Managing mm -hmm. a chronic disease is stressful yeah. year round. And then around the holidays, it is even more stressful. So with someone with diabetes, it's just even more important for them to have a game plan. Okay. And part of diabetes management includes following a carbohydrate controlled diet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be extra tough, but it's possible to follow it during the holidays. Okay, so a lot of folks, the, the fitness and nutritional folks will say, have a cheat meal. Okay. Um, and so some people will consider the Thanksgiving meal a cheat meal where you're having 4,500 calories and then some uh, and yep. consuming more than 200 grams of fat. Is, <laughs> is that okay? So I don't like the word cheat meals. Okay. Because I feel like we're being hard on ourselves. There's no need to imply guilt for eating and enjoying your food. I like you. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. We want to improve our relationship with food and especially during the holidays. So I like to focus on that word holiday. So if you overindulge on one day, let let it be. Like give yourself some grace and enjoyment, right? Now okay. if you're uncomfortable, if you ate so much that you're painfully uncomfortable, it's time to analyze like how much we're overindulging. Um, the issue may be when there's just too many holidays, right? Like, so too many celebrations too many back to back mm -hmm. with work and family and friends, you know, then all these overindulging days accumulate. So if you're just, you know, really indulging on that one Thanksgiving day, give yourself the grace and enjoy. But if you have a lot of celebrations, yeah. it's really good to start practicing some mindful eating and have that game plan that we're talking about. So way back when the South Beach Diet book, when that was the fad diet, one of sure. the things that I took from that was they said that to um, take some Metamucil beforehand <laughs> so that you don't fill up at, at dinner. Okay, is, I haven't even heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been my, my Thanksgiving meal okay. prep. Is that a good idea at all? So for Thanksgiving meal prep, I like to recommend just eating your meal, just your regular your meals, right? So if you're having Thanksgiving lunch, still have breakfast. It can be a lighter, more sensible breakfast. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to be a full you know, loaded breakfast, I, you know, yeah. like a brunch situation, but I still have some meals. So you're putting something, the idea here is that you're putting something into your stomach and you're not waiting until a big lunch or a big dinner um, because at that point we're too hungry. Our body's in starvation mode and it's very likely we're going to overeat and overindulge. Okay, and and we all know that the couch afterwards can be have <laughs> this magnetic pull to you once you've right. eaten this big a meal. What should you do after you're done with the meal? What, after a meal, you know. Or a big meal. <laughs> after a big meal. Well, I don't know if people will like this, but going on a short walk, you know, okay. is a great idea after a big meal. Uh, it can just be 10 minutes, but we talked about people with chronic conditions like diabetes, and for them, it's really beneficial to go on a short walk. Um, it helps lower blood sugars if they overindulged, mm -hmm. right? Um, the problem with the couch is not necessarily resting. Rest is a, a good thing during the holidays when we're so stressed, mm -hmm. but. If uh, having a large meal and lying down, that physiology is a big trigger for reflux symptoms. Okay. So a lot of people suffer from heartburn, uh, acid reflux, whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. And just the physiology of like lying down allows the stomach acid, you know, th that's the symptoms of the, the reflux after a large meal. So it's recommended not to lie down for three hours after a, me a larger meal. Okay, and that can go for any time of the year as well, right? This is right? any time of the year, yeah. Okay, that's, that's really good advice. And you mentioned, is there any point, because I know a lot of people, um, you kind of hinted on this earlier, but a lot of people w will do the intermittent fasting thing beforehand. Yeah. Um, is that a good advice before one of those big meals? No, we don't want to okay. fast the entire day before a meal, especially if you're not used to fasting that long. So the best thing to do is to have a sensible uh, breakfast and lunch like go along with your meal schedule and mm -hmm. it can be on the lighter side 
but it is important to get some food in because if not, a lot of things can happen when we're that hungry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we joke around about hangriness, yeah. right? We got the mixture of hunger and anger. We got all these different emotions when we're hungry and we don't need any more emotions on a big holiday on with a lot of family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hangry enough. We're also going to be more likely to overeat because we're so hungry. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, is there such a thing t to drinking our calories? Like, right. I, I mean, what's the concern? <laughs> <laughs> what does that exactly mean when it comes to like food and nutritional management? Okay. Um, like, um, should you be <laughs> guarding <laughs> the drinking of the calories? <laughs> so, when it comes to drinking your calories, there's two parts to this. There's mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming you're also referring to alcoholic beverages. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. there's the alcohol right. side and then there's the sugar side. Yes. So drinking calories could just be from sugary drinks. Yeah. And we always recommend to cut back on sugary drinks and for people with diabetes to cut mm -hmm. out sugary drinks. Okay. So that's not just your soda. That's like any sweetened tea, juice, even if it's 100% juice, yeah. um, it's still the, in the form of sugar. And it's more fruit sugar than we would eat in one piece of fruit. So okay. it's always better to eat your fruit than to drink the juice and as one way to cut back on all these sugars. Then the other side of the beverages are alcoholic beverages. So mm -hmm. if someone chooses to drink, it's always better to drink in moderation, which is one drink a day, one serving for women and two servings for men per day. What's the consideration of what's I one think, serving? I feel like you're all nutritionists. We change that <laughs> all the time because I thought I, it used to be I like three changed. or four for a guy and then two for women. Nope. nope. <laughs> Nothing's changed with this. And one serving is 12 ounces of beer. I know there's different size cans yeah. of beers out there that are, some of them are a serving and a half. Yeah. Um, and five ounces of wine and one to one and a half ounces of spirit. Okay. That's one serving. Per day. This is per day. That's the this recommended. Is considered moderation. One serving per day for a woman or two servings per day for men. Okay. And what's the benefit of that? Of drinking in moderation? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> reduction of health risk. Okay. And okay. also other impairments that can happen when drinking too much. Okay. So, basically, one drink per day. Because yes. a lot of times nowadays, like five ounces is not the minimum. What it's like served. six right. when served. And then. Yeah, we have portion distortion everywhere. So, larger portions, larger beverages. Yep. Yeah, I blame in fish inflation. <laughs> <laughs> Size is growing up with that. Um, let's go ahead with some of the uh, more commonly asked questions from some of the viewers. Um, I mentioned it to you. Would intermittent fasting help get through several holiday events over a short span of time? Not just the, 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 the big meal, but just overall. In general, yeah. right. So starting a fad diet it's not a great idea, especially if you're just going to start intermittent fasting now. The holidays are already a stressful time and giving mm -hmm. yourself a lot more restrictions now with your food and diet is only going to, going to cause more stress. Um, instead of intermittent fasting, I always, because it's not for everyone mm -hmm. um, in general, but in, I like to always recommend just general fasting which okay. is our, you know, part of a healthy lifestyle includes sleeping enough okay. at night and it's our overnight fast where we really get a lot of health benefits from fasting 12 hours. So intermittent fasting usually pushes the fasting window yeah, to, to like, like 16, 16 hours. Yeah. But if you're getting 12 hours of overnight fast, which a lot of that chunk is the time you're sleeping, um, assuming people are sleeping enough yeah, true. for our own health you are doing an overnight fast. Another time that it's important to fast is also in between meals. So allowing your body to go into a fasting, a mini fasting state mm -hmm. in between your breakfast and your lunch and in between lunch and dinner. These are all um, health promoting behaviors. Okay. That's, yeah. and, and this is a good one. Does turkey actually make you tired or is that all in the, in the mindset? It can be in the mindset and also the large meal. Okay. So. <laughs> is dark meat worse for you than white meat? Uh, so there is a difference between white meat and dark meat, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's you know drastically different that you should only choose the white meat for you know a holiday. Enjoy your holiday, eat white or dark meat, whichever one you prefer. On a daily basis throughout the year, it is better to choose white meat because it is a little leaner, has less fat. Okay. But you know between both meats, they're they're nutritious sources of protein and other vitamins. How much dessert is too much dessert? <laughs> That's a subjective question. <laughs> 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 so it depends. It depends how much is too much. If someone's trying to control their diabetes, we're going to talk about a much smaller portion. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we have to cut back on our added sugars on a daily basis, but on this one day of indulgence, you know, enjoy your food, but just be cautious with the overindulgence, like that point of, I feel sick, right? Like we don't want to get to that uncomfortable point. Yeah. yeah. What is the hunger scale and how can you benefit from that during the holidays? Right. So the hunger fullness scale is a scale used uh, when we're talking about mindful eating. So we okay. want to be more mindful, you know, like when you ask like how much is too much, like so at that point you can check in with yourself of like how full am I, right? And put yeah. a number to it. So the hunger fullness scale on a scale from one to ten, one is absolute starving, like about to faint, and then ten is like uncomfortably uh. full, like, you know, very uncomfortable. And around a three is usually when like your stomach will growl and it's yeah. like time to eat. And around a six or seven is like I'm I'm satisfied and we like that word because satisfied is also like I'm comfortable yeah. but I'm getting full. And the fuller you get, the more uncomfortable you get, right? Like past mm-hmm. the seven. So thinking about your hunger and fullness numerically, you know, you put a number to it, yeah. right? You quantify it. Can help some people decide, like, well, how hungry am I? How much dessert? You know, I've already had some dessert. Like, do I have? Is you know, how, how full am I right now? So it really is just like a, a mindful thing, it knowing is. what you're consuming and when when you're consuming it. It's, so one of the things some nutritionists have said is like, um, if you're hungry, just drink water. <laughs> is that is there any is there any um, truth to that? Right. Well, a lot of people are not drinking enough water throughout the day, right? Um, but if you have true hunger, so your stomach is growling, the only thing you need at that point is food. Okay. So it's possible you are thirsty at that point. Mm-hmm. So, you know, might as well drink some water. But if okay. a few minutes pass and you're still feeling that hunger, you need food. That's hunger is a signal to eat. It is a single signal yeah. from the stomach. But to it's, the not, brain it's probably to eat. not a bad idea to have some water <laughs> since most people are not drinking enough water. That's true, touche. Yeah. So the average American is supposed to gain eight pounds between Ooh. Thanksgiving and, Chris- and Christmas. That number one up uh, from last time I heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been eating a lot. Thank you. This was a great discussion. I enjoyed it. I Lots really of food for it. thought, right? <laughs> Touche. <laughs> exactly. Happy holidays to you. Like We're that. already at that point. Um, yeah. Thanks for your insight and appreciate it. And remember to our viewers, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your channel here um, to keep you up to date with the very latest health and wellness information and tips from our experts, including Lucette. Um, You can also connect with us on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, as well as LinkedIn, and check out our resource blog for the latest news at baptisthealth.net slash news. You'll find a link there to all episodes of the Baptist Health Talk podcast, as well as everything else from Baptist Health. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you for watching.